consolidated statement of cash flows. We've done a video on consolidated statement of accounts. We did that for income statements. We've done that for financial position. So in this episode, we're going to concentrate on cash flows. So as we already know, statement of cash flow is prepared in segments. We have four, the operating, the investing, the financing, then the cash and cash equivalent. We're going to go through each of them. So for the operating activities, the pro forma, we start with the group profit before tax. In the other episode or in the cash flow that we worked out was for an individual company. So we just picked the profit before tax. But because it's consolidated, we pick the group. Now the thing with cash flow is that you can decide to pick the profit for the year or the group profit before tax or the operating profit or the profit before interest and tax. Whichever one you pick is okay. It will determine the amount of adjustment that you would have to make. So for the purposes of this lecture, we're going to pick the group profit before tax. Now when that is done, we have to make adjustment for non-cash items. Again, profit and loss accounts are prepared on accrual basis. Revenue is recorded based on it being earned, not when the money is received. Expenses are recorded based on it being incurred, whether the money has been paid or not. So with the cash flow, we add back any adjustment or any item that was deducted to arrive at the group of it before tax. And we subtract any item that was added to get to this balance. So here, depreciation will have to be added because it was subtracted. We have to add back impairment. We would also have to subtract any gains on tangibles. When we talk about tangibles, we are talking about non-current assets. If it's a loss, it was subtracted. So we add back any gain on the sale of a subsidiary will have to be subtracted. A loss made will be added. We move on to the share of an associate's profit. Mind you, I don't know a group account. So there's a possibility of an associate being part of the group. The parent's share of their profits would have been added. So we subtract it because we don't know for certain if the amount has been paid or not. Then interest payable. Movement in inventory. If it is an increase, we subtract. If it is a decrease, we add. The same for receivables. We subtract an increase. We add a decrease. For payables, on the other hand, we add an increase. Then we subtract a decrease. This will lead to cash generated from operations. We will proceed to adjust certain figures. The interest that we adjusted from the group profit before tax. Once we ascertain the actual amount that was paid, we subtract from here. Then the tax that was also paid. We did all this adjustment in the earlier discussion on cash flow. So you can visit the link above to abreast yourself with that. Not to worry, we'll tackle a comprehensive example in a later video and it'll all be clearer to refresh our minds. So after this, we'll know the total amount that the business generated, whether a surplus or a deficit through the activities of the business within that particular financial year. Okay. We'll move on to the other segment, which is the investing activities. So here we want to talk about the group's inflow or outflow that had to do with investments that they wanted to make. The investment can be in assets or can be in other entities. Okay, so we start with the proceeds that they get in selling on current assets. It is bringing in more money, so it is a plus. Any purchases of non-current assets will lead to money flowing out, so it will be a deficit or subtracted we would also add the dividend received from associates any acquisition of a subsidiary is subtracted so the net amount paid to acquire a subsidiary is subtracted the net amount received in selling of a subsidiary is also added we will also add any dividend received this can be from other investments that they have made then this will lead to the cash generated from investing activities it can be a deficit for that particular year. It can be a surplus. We move on to the last but one segment, which is the financing activities. We want to ascertain the amount that flow into the group through financing activities or otherwise. So we start with proceeds from the issuing of shares. And these shares will only have to do with the parent. Remember, the shares of the subsidiary cancels the investment in the subsidiary in the consolidated statement of financial position. 
Also, if the business goes in for a loan, it leads to money coming in. It would have to be added. Settlement of a loan leads to outflow of cash. It would have to be subtracted. Then we also have to subtract dividend paid to non-contributing interest. As with the associates, the amount that is allocated in the group income statement, that is not what we record here. We would have to ascertain the actual amount, actual cash that were paid or was paid to the non-controlling interest. Then we capture it here. We would also subtract any dividend paid to the parent shareholders. Then lead to the cash generated from the financing activities. Now we come to cash and cash equivalent. Cash and cash equivalent is made up of the cash in hand, cash at bank, any short term asset, less any short term liability, especially overdraft. So to work it out, we start with a change in cash and cash equivalent, which is the movement of the prior year to that of the current. If the prior year is less than that of the current, it becomes positive. However, if it is more than that, then it is a minus. Okay. We then add the opening cash and cash equivalent for that particular year, which will lead us to the closing cash and cash equivalent. Now, one thing that we have to note is that the change in cash and cash equivalent must be equal to the summation of all the three activities that we have worked so far. That is a check. So if you add the operating activities to the investing activities and the financing activities, it must amount to the movement of the cash and cash equivalent for that particular year. If it isn't, then there's an error. Now, we move on to how we can find the dividend that is actually paid to the non-controlling interest. So, we pick the value of the non-controlling interest. What their total value should have been. What it currently stands. That will give us what has been paid to them. So, non-controlling interest is recorded in the equity section of the financial position. So, it has a credit balance. So, we pick the opening balance. So, that can be found from the prior year's figure. If the business just became a parent in that particular year, it will be zero. We will add the profits that is allocated to them. That can be found in the group income statement. Then, if an acquisition of a new subsidiary was done in that current year, if it was not a full holding, it means there will be a space for an NCI. Their figure will also have to be added here. Then, if there is a disposal of a subsidiary, it is supposed to reduce the value of NCI's stake in the group. So, to reduce it, we debit it. We will pick the closing balance of the non-controlling interest, which is the balance that is standing in that particular year. If we close it and there is a difference, that will be the dividend that had been paid to the NCI. When we move on to dividend received from associates. Now, dividend received becomes an asset. It should have a debit balance. So, for the pro forma, the balance for the value of the associates, which will be the investments in associates in the non-current asset session of the group statement of financial position, the prior year. Then, the profit that is supposed to be attributed to the parent from the associate, not the total value of the profit earned by the associates. Ideally, if nothing is paid out, it should equal the closing balance. That is the figure standing for the current period. So, if you close it and there is a difference, that will be the dividend that has been received from the associate. Let's test our understanding. So, this is an extract of the group statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st December 2015. So, we have the operating profits, we have the finance cost, we have the share of profits from associates. Then, this will be the group profit before tax you get taxation and profit for the year. Then we have the profit shared to the parents, 54 million to the parents and 6 million to the non-controlling interest. And this is the profit that is associated to the NCI. When we come to the statement of financial position, we have investments in associates listed. We have the non-controlling interest again, because it is an extract. We are not listing all the components. So we have to calculate the dividend paid to the non-controlling interest and received from the associates which is supposed to appear in the group statement of cash flow for the year ended 31st December 2015. So we start with the dividend paid to non-controlling interest. The opening balance, that is the balance for 2014, which was $110 million. Then the profits that was allocated to them was $6 million. The closing balance, that is for 2015, 
was 115 million. It means the dividend of 1 million was paid out. For dividend received from associates, we start with the opening balance at $180 million. The profits attributed to the group was $20 million. Closing balance, which is for 2015, is $190 million. There will be a difference, which is $10 million as dividend received. We move straight to acquisition or disposal of subsidiary. So when a parent purchases a subsidiary, it is the net cash paid out that is recorded. And if it sells off a subsidiary, it is the net cash received, not the amount that it paid or received, the whole sum amount that is recorded. And this, as shown, will be recorded in the investing session of the group statement of cash flow. Okay. So when a group makes a purchase of a subsidiary, they normally have an amount they pay out. Then there would normally be a balance as cash or cash and cash equivalent for the subsidiary that is coming in. That will also have to be deducted from the price that was paid, which will lead to the net cash that was paid. When you sell off the subsidiary, there will be an amount that you are receiving. Meanwhile, the subsidiary might have a cash or a cash and cash equivalent balance. So the actual cash that you are gaining is the difference between the two. So working capital is made up of inventory, receivables, and payables. So we start with their opening balances. Then their values with respect to the subsidiary that has been purchased. If it is being purchased, we add the values for this three segments. If they are being sold off, we subtract. That will lead to the amount that is supposed to be expected. Now, this is supposed to be compared to the closing balances to ascertain the movement. If we just compare the opening to the closing, as we do when we are sorry for the individual entity's cash flow, if we do it here, we'll be wrong. Because the jump in the working capital is not as a result of their day-to-day -day operations alone. So the closing balance will be here. When the difference is found between the expected and the closing, that will be the movement. So we test our understanding again. So Pablo's group statement of financial position as of 31st December 2015 is recorded here. So we have the non-current asset, that is the property, plant, and equipment stated here. We have the current assets, inventory, receivables, cash and cash equivalent. And we have the current liabilities, that is the trade payables. Okay. So we move on to additional information. So on 1st June 2015, Pablo acquired all the share capital of Jane for $50 million. The fair value of the identifiable net assets and liabilities at the date of the acquisition reflected in the group's years and balances are as follows. So we have the property, plant and equipment. We have the inventory. We have the receivables. We have the cash and cash equivalents. We have the payables. So we have been asked to show how we are going to present the above information in the consolidated cash flows for the year ended 31st December 2015. So for solution, the operating activities we have a decrease in inventory, which is a plus. We'll show the workings in the subsequent slide. We also have an increase in receivables, which is a minus, an increase in payables, which is a plus. For investing activities, we'll have property plant and equipment purchase for 11 million. Then the acquisition of the subsidiary, the net amount paid would also come here. For workings, the first one will be the working capital inventory receivables and payables so their opening in the question was 195 for inventory 109 for receivables and 67 million for payables then with respect to the purchases jane the subsidiary came in with 8 million worth of inventory 6 million worth of receivables and 5 million worth of payables the expected value to be compared to the closing will be 203 million for inventory 115 for receivables, 72 for payables. We are adding because it was an acquisition. Now, the closing balance in the account is 145 million for inventory, 130 million for receivables, and 85 for payables. That will lead to a decrease in inventory of 58 million, which is a plus, an increase of 15 million of receivables, which is a minus, a payable increase of 13 million. For the net cash paid, because it was a purchase, they paid 50 million upfront for the 100 percent stake the subsidiary which is jane had 9 million worth of cash in its net identifiable assets the net cash paid recorded in the investing section was 41 million dollars so for the property plant and equipment 
the opening balance was $490 million. There was a purchase which increased it by $19 million. Then, because there was no sale, the closing was $520 million. Ideally, the value was supposed to be the addition of the 490 and the 19, which would have been 509. But the closing sales is 520. It means that there has been an additional purchase of 11 million of property plans and equipment. This is where we draw the curtains on this episode lecture.